All right, so in this set of videos, we're gonna work through this list of signal properties. The first property that we're gonna talk about is continuous time and discrete time signals. So what is a continuous time signal? What is a discrete time signal in terms of their core definitions? A continuous time signal is a signal that is specified for all points in time. So when we talk about continuous time signals, we usually plot them versus time where we label that axis T, so a little T. And no matter where we pick on that axis, the signal has a value. Discrete time signals, on the other hand, are discrete time signals that only exist or are defined at discrete points in time. So whereas for a continuous time signal, you can pick any real value number, a whole continuum of values, an infinite number of values, an uncountably infinite number of values, and that signal will be defined. A discrete time signal is only going to exist at a either a finite number of points in time or a countably infinite number of points in time. Let's draw some little cartoons to get a better feel for what we mean by this. So first of all, a CT signal, a continuous time signal, we always plot verse is continuous variable T. And here's just kind of a little cartoon sketch of what a continuous time signal might look like. So I've drawn the continuous time signal X of T. No matter where I pick on the time axis, so if I pick this point, then my signal has this value, it's defined. Or if I pick this point in time on the time axis, then my signal has this value, it's defined. So no matter where I pick on the horizontal axis T, I can always find a value of the signal and my signal is defined because it is a continuous time signal. What about discrete time signals? What do they look like? So first of all, when we plot discrete time signals, we plot it versus a discrete time variable. I almost always use the variable k to indicate discrete time, so that's why I've plotted the discrete time signal x of k. But other books and other uh, people use different variables. Sometimes people use m, sometimes people use n or l. There's lots of different variables that you can use to indicate discrete time. I'm going to choose k for this plot. When I plot this signal versus discrete time, the values on the time axis take on discrete values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. So let's see what a discrete time signal looks like. First of all, when we plot a discrete time signal, we use these lines with dots at the top that we call stems to make the plots. And notice that the discrete time signal x of k only exists or it only has a stem at these discrete points in time. So there's a stem at time 0, and there's a stem at time 1, and a stem at time 2, etc. The height of the stem indicates the value of the signal at that point in time, just like it did for the continuous time signal x of t. So for instance, at time k equals 3, the signal x of k has a negative value, whereas at the time k equals 4, the discrete time signal x of k has a positive value. So this is what a discrete time signal looks like and how we plot it. Finally, let's talk just a little bit about some more of the notation that relates continuous time signals and discrete time signals. Often when we go to a discrete time signal, we've come from a continuous time signal through a process called sampling. And we're gonna get into sampling later in the course for sure. The frequency with which we sample, there's two ways to talk about it. One is in terms of units of time at t. So how often do I grab a sample? So t might be seconds or 0.4 seconds or 0.1 seconds, how often in time. The other way to think about it is in terms of a rate, how many samples per second, and that's what we note by f sub s. So f sub s might be 10, meaning 10 samples per second, or 50, 50 samples per second, something like that. These quantities t, the sampling period, and fs, the sampling rate, are related via the equation t equals 1 over fs. So that's one thing to kind of keep in mind. Another thing to uh, know about discrete time signals is really they're just a list of numbers. We can just write down a discrete time signal often when they are finite in length because there's only a finite number of values that we need to write down. Another word that people use for discrete time signals is a time series. I don't use that word too often, but some authors use that word. Also, just the notation of continuous time signals and discrete time signals tells us what type of signal they are. We always use parentheses for continuous time signals, x of t, 
and we always use these brackets for discrete time signals. So when I wrote down the discrete time signal in the previous plot, I used x of k, and that right away told you it was going to be a discrete time signal. Finally, let's talk about how on kind of pen and paper we can go from continuous time to discrete time and back again. So just with a little example here, let's say I have a continuous time signal f of t, which is equal to e to the minus t. So this, as time gets large, is a decaying signal. And let's say I want to turn it into a discrete time signal by sampling it every 0.1 units of time. Well, the way I can do that is by simply replacing the continuous time variable t with the quantity kt, where t is capital T right here, right? So what that does is it replaces the continuous time variable t with increments of discrete time, capital T, because k always takes on integer values. So if I do that, if I actually replace this t with kt, I end up with this signal right here. And for this particular example, I'm assuming that the sampling period, capital T, is 0.1. So I end up with this signal right here after I've done that algebraic substitution, e to the minus 0.1 k. I now have a quantity that's only a function of time k, so I've actually created the discrete time signal f of k. And my discrete time signal f of k is this signal right here. When I plot this discrete time signal f of k, I would plot it versus k. k equals nine, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. But note, really behind the scenes, the t and the k are kind of linked to each other via the equation little t equals k. T. So even though I'm plotting k equals 0, k equals 1, k equals 2, I can almost think about that as time t equals 0, t equals 0.1, t equals 0.2. I'm sampling in increments of time, capital T equals 0.1. All right, well, that is it for now. We have discussed one of our first signal properties, the differences between continuous time signals and discrete time signals. In the subsequent videos, we'll keep working through that list.